There were two rains that were essential to a farmer in the region of Galilee. The first rain watered the seeds and seedlings. The second came later and irrigated the crops and provided for a better harvest. In between, it was the farmer that found ways to provide nourishment and protection for his crops. We are called farmers in this gospel harvest, but to be that, we need to know how to act, how to put faith into action. Getting ready for the harvest. Good day, guests. Thank you so much for joining us here. Please introduce ourselves and say something that you are waiting or you're preparing for. Well, my name is Jenny, and, you know, uh, I'm waiting for this weekend, I guess. Awesome. Hmm. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Jenny. Hello. Uh, my name is Julius Vines. Uh, I'm waiting for God's will to be completely revealed to me. Mm. I mean, he's, he's revealing it to me, but I want, like, the whole picture. You want the whole picture, the whole cake? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Hey, Julius. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tanya Muganda, and I recently graduated with my master's. Woohoo! So I'm waiting to see that degree in the mail very soon and see where God's going to lead. So I'm, I'm just excited to just, I have a passion for kids, so I want to use what I learned. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> and congratulations on your recent Thank graduation. You. Wonderful. Jenny, can you read our scripture today and offer prayer for us, please? Of course. Thanks. All right. So our scripture is James 5, 8. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Um, please be with us as we go through your word and help us to learn something from each other as we have this discussion. Uh, we love you so much. Amen. 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 This one is talking about, this lesson is talking about the harvest. And we've seen harvest talked about in a couple of places, especially in the New Testament. Um, we know farming is a, was always a big deal uh, in the Old Testament. And we see a lot of correlation or stories or parables and things mm -hmm. talked about again. In this epistle here, in James 5, 7, he refers to the latter rain. Why do you think he uses this image in connection with the coming of the Lord? In 5.7, he says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruits of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Why do you think that he uses this image in connection with the coming of the Lord? Well... He would use the image of the latter rain specifically because that would be the rain that prepares it for the harvest, and mm -hmm. the harvest would be a second coming. Mm -hmm. So I could see why that, that would happen. I mean, I would also think that the, um, the wheat or whatever harvest mm -hmm. would also need some time to prepare so that I can kind of see how that uh, image could be used. Okay. He tells us to be patient, though. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. He tells yeah. us to be patient. Oh, yeah. So have we reached a point yet of harvest? Do we know? or no. What are we doing right now? Okay, I, think, <laughs> I think we are being I think the reason why he said to be patient mm -hmm. is because it, it, it hasn't, like, the harvest hasn't come yet. And so um, the, reason why we, the reason why we have to be patient so that we can go through our trials and tribulations mm -hmm. in order to reach that full harvest and to get everything that we have um, we've been preparing to get to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Julius. Any thoughts, Tanya? I was just thinking of uh, my pastor at my church that I go to, Sligo, um, and he always asks us on, sab on Sabbath, um, have you had a character building week? Mm. So I was thinking, you know, when we were waiting for the second coming or for that latter rain, in the meantime, you know, he's building 
us up to be better disciples. So I was just thinking of that idea, another great way to um, kind of give it more clarification for that. So. I like I, I like that character building week. Right. What are we doing in the process? And I think I, I like the whole I like that the Holy Spirit inspired James to use this these this image of crops and harvest because it's kind of almost you can see it, can't you? You kind right. of can see the beginning and the process of waiting and watering and letting the ground become soft a little bit until you can actually put in the seeds and then you have to pour some more rain and I'm sure there's a whole nother process. Uh, I'm a city girl, a suburban girl, <laughs> so I'm not that handy with actually planting crops or trees, but I've seen it done, my grandmother and my mother and my parents and just being able to see how they're able to do crops, it kind of brings that image to life so we can kind of see the process. Right. Mm -hmm. did, did, what do y'all, do y'all like that imagery? Y'all have any other thoughts or any kind of other imagery that can go along with this process or? I mean, I like that imagery. <laughs> yeah, that one's good. Yeah. Yeah. That one works really well. That works well? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's straight. It's straight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wait, let's, turn it to, let's turn to Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Verses 28 and 30. Okay. What should distinguish in the wheat from the tears only at harvest time? Tell us about church discipline. Are you familiar with church discipline or have you seen any points of church discipline? What does it tell us about how we go about church discipline in this current state, this current day and age in regards to the story that we see, the parable that, is, that we see as far as for distinguishing the wheat and the tears only at harvest time? Hmm. Who wants to, who wants to, that's, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh, Any thoughts well, about, at all about it? Well, what do you, what, let me ask you this. Somebody is disruptive at church every week. When the pastor is preaching, they're, that's not true, and I don't believe that, or they're mumbling, or maybe even try, let me, that, and that's more overt. Let me try something a little bit more covert underneath. Mm. Things such as board meetings and those things which become oh. contentious, oh and it becomes really toxic sometimes, and mm. sometimes there's good things that go along with it, but at times we've, I, I, I don't know, I've, I've seen at different churches, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people at some point have seen where it seems to be this troublemaker that's really not trying to, or troublemakers, that they're really not trying to build up and edify the body of Christ, but it seems to want to be divisive. What do we do in regard, what do we do? Maybe, I don't know, pull them aside or disciplinary, mm -hmm. disciplinary action or, it's hard. Um, I don't know, Cause, but I've mm -hmm. seen that happen in meetings uh, or, mm -hmm. you know, when people are voting for things they're not happy about and mm -hmm. it's just always that one person who's like, no, I don't like that. Nope, I'm not happy with that. And you're like, how do we deal with that type of individual in the church? Mm -hmm. And you're still trying to do stuff out of love. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, you know, something. To, are there uh, yeah. any rules like in place for people like that? I mean, or in case those people do something against those rules, mm -hmm. uh, is there like some type of rep reprimandation for that? Well, I'm, I, I, I can't begin to, to be a scholar on okay, the rules okay, and regulations okay, okay. of the Adventist church. Yeah. But in respects to what this is saying here in 13, yeah. um, the verses 28 through 30, mm -hmm. he says, Jesus says, he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And I'm putting this back. Now, Jesus is saying, mm -hmm. kind of, let him sit, let him go. Mm -hmm. But what mm -hmm. if it's really disruptive? And the whole point, it seems as if they're, all they're trying to do is that the tears are only just trying to get at the wheat. Well. 
what do we what do we what do we do? What or how can we do this in a Christ-like way, in a loving way? I know it's complicated, uh, yeah. but I, and I know that the church does have some rules and yeah. regulations. The problem, though, sometimes is it has appeared that these are it doesn't really take root of the problem sometimes, and maybe doesn't go back and really make it a a, a part a time also to to repair or restore. How can we go about this? What do you have to say, Jenny? Isn't there something about like, you know, if a brother in the church offends you, you go to that brother and then you talk with them. And then if that doesn't work, then you go and get another church member and you two together talk, talk to that person. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, the whole church gets involved. I mean, that sounds like a good solution to me mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I, I, I agree. I, agree with, I completely agree with that because I was going to say just... Along with that, I was gonna say just let let the let everything play out in terms of like the peop the people who are or I guess the tares and the wheat they'll they'll grow and uh, I believe the tares are like uh, poisonous. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, tares are like, po <laughs> they're like poisonous. Um, it's like a poisonous type of crop or something. And the wheat is like a a positive crop. And well, so, the tears are like the weeds. Yeah, they, yeah, they're the ones they're trying to take the, first, take the good plant. It seems. Yeah, mm -hmm. at, at first it's like that, but as, mm -hmm. when it when it's like fully harvested, you see exactly what the tears are, and you see exactly what the wheat is. Mm. So that's when he's like, okay, that's when you have that's when you, all your problems are basically, or all, mm. you have the solution to all your problems right there. So sometimes in the process, and when we're thinking of discipline, we might, ha we might not have seen the full development of right. growth of the whole situation. Exactly. Or the individuals. Yes. And Christ is saying that this time, there will come a time where you'll fully see them mm -hmm. and you'll really be able to distinguish. And I love, I really, really like that you brought that out, Judy, that kind of just popped out to me as well, that it's mm -hmm. a time of... Right. We're seeing sometimes people in the process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and God, Christ is saying at this end, though, I'm going to distinguish it because now we've come to a full development. Right. But in respects that we still sometimes still have to address yeah. things that can be really divisive and are just not coming from a loving space. And you pointed on that, Jenny, and I like, I think all of that goes together as well. That the Bible does say, somewhere in the New Testament, I can't recall, but the Bible does say that you go to your brother and you go and you talk to them. And then if they're not willing to listen, you get somebody else to come with you. If they're not willing to listen, you get a few more to come. Because the church in the past has, sometimes some churches and denominations or so forth practice automatic disfellowship, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, I've heard which is kind of not allowing for a time of restoration or discussion, right. Right. whereas we're still supposed to, we don't, we really even don't know, will the wheat turn to tears or will the tears turn to wheat? We, yeah. I mean, we're not yeah. seeing the full harvest, so that was excellent. Thanks so much for that. Really, really good. So Tanya, it's hard I saw you to... talking about, so I, I knew you had something you wanted to say. So, so pretty much it's hard to separate good from evil, right? Because there's some As people... As humans, can right. we really distinguish that? I don't think we can, because I was just thinking of that. And I think, like what you were saying earlier, the point you made, um, people are still growing and maturing. So even if they have a disagreement with someone else, it doesn't mean that they're an evil person. They just have a different view on how things should be. And then I was thinking, I think sometimes what can help in meetings or whatever situation, mm -hmm. set your differences aside and just try to hear a person out and hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a reason why people react a certain way. Mm -hmm. Maybe something had happened or there's something that's been just making them angry for a while or, you know, just be open-minded mm -hmm. to other people's different yeah. points of views. That's what I would you know, so. And not just jump to judgment. Right. Not just I jump to that. We tend and, to do that. Yeah, and just to ascribe think, something to them. Yeah. <laughs> they're bad. They're evil. They're mean. Right. They messed exactly. up. They shouldn't have done that. And we all fall short. Oh, yes, we do. So oh, yeah. maybe we just need to see it through a little bit. I love those were excellent, excellent points. <laughs> Thank you for that. What does James mean when he says establish your heart? And he says that in James 5, 8. You also be patient. That's what, that was the text that you read earlier, Jenny. Mm -hmm. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. What does he mean by establish your hearts? Well, 
What I take that to mean is if you're establishing your heart with him, you're going to prepare for the second coming. You're going to have that relationship grow, right? Mm -hmm. And also what I think of is, you know, especially with your heart, home is where your heart is. If you establish your heart with Jesus mm -hmm. and with God, then your relationship will grow. You will, you will reflect him more. And eventually you'll go to our permanent home with him mm. and leave this like temporary home. And I wanted to add to that, um, get rid of any anger or frustration or any type of grudges you have. I think that helps you to strengthen your heart and your faith. Because when you have division in the church or with, with each other, your heart can never get stronger. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a way of yeah, I, kind I, I of... The Bible is really great in that that it's it's not just one thing per right. se. That there's other right. angles to and both of the angles I think are absolutely great. Establish. When I think of the word establish, I'm thinking of set down and to go along with the harvest thing, put some roots right. <laughs> somewhere, right. get some roots somewhere. And yeah. so I think both of them, both of those really work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put your heart somewhere, ground it someplace, as you said, and where your heart is, there lies your home or say home, that again yeah. one more time home is where the heart is home, home is where yes. the heart is i just reversed that all around <laughs> <laughs> but home is where the heart is and so where's your home mm -hmm. where are you where are you putting the roots for your home right, right. And you need hmm. a strong foundation exactly. yep. i think when you have that strong biblical foundation it helps to strengthen your heart mm -hmm. and your faith so mm -hmm. not easy but no. it can be done it can be done it's like when you it's like when you're when you're when, you, when you're starting off building a house you got to have the foundation first right. Because you don't have that foundation and you start building up everything else, eventually the house is just going to fall down. You're going to be like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to, then you're going to realize, oh, I didn't have that foundation. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. so, and that reminds me of the parable of the guy mm -hmm. who built his house on the rock. Yeah, exactly. The house on the rock. A little bit of wind is going to fall. A yep. little bit of rain is right. going to fall. It's going to become like quicksand. These things are going to happen. But if we have it firmly, if firmly grounded, We'll be able to stand because it says, be, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And the Bible talks about what's going to happen as, as he continues to prepare to come. And as we're preparing here, it's not going to be always easy. Mm. It's not going to always just be so, so right. the freedom that we have, we may not have. The things that we are enjoying, we may not be able to enjoy. Mm. And we need to have a firm grounding or else we're going to be going in all kinds of directions right. and may miss the mark, you know, the prize. I don't want to miss the prize. No. Like I, I, I always said, I, I, something about something ex is exciting about just seeing the face of Jesus. Yeah. Outside of everything yes. else, I'm just like I, I have so many questions and things. I, I need to meet folks and talk, and so I, I don't want to miss the prize. Yeah. <laughs> Job. Oh yeah, that's my man. <laughs> that's oh, your man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can we learn in practical terms about godly patience from the story of Job? Through suffering, um, there's a lot you learn about yourself. Yeah. Mm. And looking at Job, it was like, wow, that is impressive. Because I know for me, if I was hit with all these disasters, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would continue to be faithful. And, you know, but with Job, even though he suffered more than what most of us would suffer, he mm -hmm. still kept his faith. And that's tough. So yeah. mm. I think through suffering, you really see your character and who you really are. Hmm. Test your faith yeah. to see if you really trust God to get you through whatever it is you're going through. So hmm. that's yeah. how I, I yeah. see how it. How you see it. I, <laughs> suffering so, will bring about is yes. a true character builder. Yes, it is. Character when building. When things are good, we kind of <laughs> just kind of, right. oh, this is great, and we float along. But mm -hmm. when it becomes hard, oh man, can what, what, what do we do? What, what else know. does... Go ahead, Julius. I was going to say, because mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm... Right now, I feel like I'm in Job's like shoes, just mm -hmm. in my personal, all my my personal life. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I might I might have exactly what I want, and then like God just like takes it from me. And at first, I would be like, I just be mad and just upset with God. Mm -hmm. But then like, cause I, I read in the Bible, like He'll give you the desires of your heart. And sometimes you might take away those desires, but He'll He'll eventually like give it back to you. So it's it's like he it's like God I, like I I know that God is going to keep providing for me and giving me mm -hmm. blessings and stuff, but when sometimes like uh, like a situation might happen, 
and God might allow some of those things to be taken away from me, just as it happened with Job. And it's just like when the when that when that does happen, it's just like you gotta trust God more and more mm -hmm. and more. And through that, God will eventually reveal or give you exactly what you want and double what you had before. Just how that happened with Job. Mm. So, hmm. And I'd kind of like to add to that. Sometimes you don't even really know what would make you happy. Exactly. But God does. Because yeah, because so I ask God for certain desires and I get those <laughs> desires, and I'm like, no, I don't want this anymore. Mm. As but some even now, God still it's like you ask for it, so I'm gonna give it to you. And I'm I'm seeing it's like you gotta be careful what you ask for, because you will get it. One you will get it one day, and you might be like, and when you get it, you might be like, oh. I don't want this no more. I remember being young, you know, you always hear people, and I, I hear this all the time, I'm praying for patience. I remember I used to think when I was a little bit younger, I'm not asking for patience. Because every story for patience seemed to have some huge, big yeah, thing that exactly. happens to really have to make you patient. But in the process of that, I, I learned, I said, at a point I was like, okay, I do want that patience yes. because we're going to have to endure in this, in this season of life, we're gonna to have to endure, and I don't want to be at a place where I can't endure or I can't grow or I can't hear him anymore just because I want what I want. Job is an epitome of patience. I mean, mm -hmm. I know there's plenty of other stories, but that's a lot of, and, and it's not just the human patience, it's godly patience. What were yes. some of the things that he did while, while, I mean, while he was in his time of pain? What were some of the things that he did? Did, mm. I mean, he then he, he talked. To, yeah, he, he talked oh, to God. Exactly. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you got to reason with God and talk to him and stuff. But yeah, he did that because the went, word says, "Come, let us reason together." Yeah, because he went so to he would reason with us. Because <laughs> then, then like his, then his wife like leave him or something like that. Or yeah, or she asked. She said, "Why oh. would you just curse God and die?" Right. And we didn't hear any more about her. But <laughs> you know, at that point, so what but, does that mean if you ain't hear about her no more? Well, I think I don't know. <laughs> We need a where are they now story. But yeah, part two. <laughs> part two. But that was part of that was one of the things she said. She said, curse God and die. And what did Job do? He, he says, didn't no, do that. Didn't do it. No. He didn't do it. He says, you know, from the dust I came and from the dust I returned. I mean, that's, he, he said, I'm just going to, you know, naked I came in and naked exactly. I leave. Yeah. Uh, you know, blessed. He lifted up the name of God. And mm -hmm. if, in the midst of the hard part and in the, because growth is not, you know, we talk about growing pains. Or, Growth does not always feel good. Nope, not at all. <laughs> you know, and I'm kind of imagining the plants just with the whole harvest theme going back and them coming out and they're inanimate. But I'm thinking of even when we were younger, just the times you, you sometimes something hurts because while we're developing and growing, mm -hmm. it doesn't always feel good. And so that's where the godly patience, though, knowing that, okay, it might not feel good today. But I'll be a little bit taller tomorrow, or I'll be a little bit this, you know, I'll be fully developed and ready to be used, and maybe I could run track better. I don't know <laughs> these yeah. types of things. But Job really experienced, really showed some godly patience. All right. He talked to God, and he 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 sat and listened to the answer, and he he said, "I, I accept all of that. Whatever you have, God, I'm accepting." And at the end of that, God restored him. All right. So. Mm -hmm. And for us, it may not always be that kind of restoration, but I think the peace outside of everything else was yeah. something that he was able to have. Even before God restored him, he came to a point of acknowledging Christ and not acknowledging God and his sovereignty and took the peace. Yes, it's kind of mm -hmm. like you. It's kind of like when the like when a thunderstorm or the rain is falling, mm -hmm. like instead of like going inside, you can sit out in that rain and storm and just like rejoice and. Just dance around in it, like dance in the rain. <laughs> don't, don't dance in the rain. Yeah, exactly. Dance in the don't, don't just okay. It's raining. I'm out here. Yeah. I'm gonna let me just go ahead and, and enjoy it, it and have fun with it through the process right. and and let it go. Because a lot of times we think about with trials and certain things that we're always trying to escape it. Yeah, you but can't the process escape. that we can't escape. Can't I mean, escape we, we can't always escape. We have to learn how to endure and to go exactly. through, which is important. Okay, so. Shifting just a little bit, according to James, how are we to respond to the corruption that we see in the world? Well, mm. oh. which, I mean, <laughs> this verse right here says it. 
James 5-8, be patient. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't, you, you gotta, you gotta learn how to, how to, I guess, you gotta learn how to finesse it. Mm. You gotta learn how to finesse it. You, you, gotta, you gotta know how to move around in it and how to mm -hmm. stay away from it. And because you, I mean, you can't escape, it, but you can stay away from it at certain part, certain points in your life. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you gotta, you gotta find that, you gotta find your own way to do that. Mm -hmm. And like with that, you like you're gonna have tests, that test your character and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. Like God's gonna, most of the tests and stuff is gonna be like character builders from God, mm. and it's it's gonna be like okay. Okay, this is from God's point of view. It's like okay, I'm I'm going to send this test to my son or to my daughter, and I'm going to see how he reacts to it. Mm -hmm. And most of the things that happen to us happen in the Bible already. <laughs> and but most of most of us don't read our Bibles like that to even know what's mm. happening in our mm. lives. Like our lives are in the Bible. Like like I said earlier. Like right now I'm in Job. <laughs> and some people mm. might be like Ruth or like John or Paul or something, but if you if you don't read your Bible, you can end up making a, a mistake that goes down the line that you really don't want to go through. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you got you got to learn how to how to work things out, even while you're you're in everything. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to add to that, uh, you know that saying, you can be in the world but not of, of the, the world. world. Mm -hmm. right. We may be part of this corruptive like evil world, but it doesn't mean we have to follow how everyone lives. So we try to set ourselves apart. Mm -hmm. from the rest of the world and try right. to live try to live godly lives which is not always perfect mm -hmm. but you know do the best yeah, we can right. to stand out and keep the bible you know forefront in our lives prayer and mm -hmm. god sun center of our lives absolutely absolutely and, uh, i think establishing your heart in the coming of the lord right. is a part of that mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. Yeah, taking root there, and, and part of that, I mean, the Bible talks about we, we should be salt, and salt adds flavor. So, mm -hmm. with that as well, it's not just about I'm just going to be here, and I don't want to see anybody exactly. to the left or the right. <laughs> but in that process, that we can be in in the world, but not to right. necessarily truly taking on that character, but trying right. to show that character of Christ, trying to demonstrate that character, that love, and that's at the essence in the in, in all of these things. It's at the love we want to encourage and uplift others as we go through so we're right. we are looking to the left and the right but we're showing the love of Jesus by being patient right. we're showing them how to mm -hmm. endure we're showing them right. just through our day-to-day -day how we're going about if you would like to contact us please visit our website at www.sabbathschoolu.org that's www.sabbathschool the letter u.org remember the goal of Bible study is information and transformation it's for the head and for the heart. For Sabbath School U, I'm Janelle Phillip.